<laughs> Last night, the UK had fairly dramatic storms and apparently there was thunder and lightning across the country and very heavy downpours. Well, at half past two this morning, I was wandering around the garden because I couldn't remember whether I'd turned the duck's water off or not. And, uh, <laughs> and the last thing I wanted was a hose pipe running all night. So uh, I was traipsing around. It wasn't even particularly dark at that time of night. And, uh, and, uh, and there was certainly uh, no thunderstorms or rain at that point. However, this morning I've woken up and the ground is, is very wet and the plants are all breathing a sigh of relief and all looking fresh and beautiful and very, very lovely. Here in the greenhouse, I seem to be growing an amazing crop of tomato leaves. And, um, <laughs> and at first glance, not very many tomatoes, but tucked away in amongst the foliage down there, those are very, very definitely some ripening tomatoes. So I think my job in the next couple of days has to be to uh, tackle some of these leaves and make sure I've taken off any side shoots uh, from these cordon tomatoes and, uh, and, uh, and just get to grips with the foliage that is, well, it's just growing beautifully. And while the ground is all soft and damp, my intention today is to carry on planting some of the uh, pumpkins and the squashes <laughs> and I'm pulling behind me a, a cart full of compost uh, bought in from the local garden centre and uh, this I'm going to be using in the little planting pockets for the uh, for the pumpkins and squashes that are going in. Today it's one of those days when I'm feeling oh, a bit overwhelmed by the amount of work there is to do here and um, and yesterday we had a an unannounced visit from the local council to inspect our premises um, which I was kind of expecting but obviously didn't know when they do it uh, to inspect us so that we can uh, sell uh, our surplus uh, fruit and veg in in a mixed veg box at the farm gate and uh, and I want to do this and I've applied to do it but it just it's just so much red tape and and administrative work and on days like today when I'm feeling yeah just a bit bleh, um it just feels like you know it's so much work for for <laughs> for what will be uh, such small sales and um you know I'm talking about maybe 10 veg boxes a year <laughs> and it's it's a ridiculous amount of of, of paperwork and um, jumping through hoops and uh, getting public liability insurance and and you know really the insurance is going to cost far more than we'll we'll ever take in veg sales and you know it just it just kind of makes me wonder if any of it's worth it um, because I'm not growing to sell I'm growing to feed us and I just wanted the option to to sell the surplus but because I wanted to do it right and I didn't want to uh, because I didn't want to be on the wrong side of the law in doing any of this you know I I rang the council and said what do I need to do and you know and and then the ball started rolling and there was this like loads of paperwork and questions and you know and none of it's a, a problem it just seems like an awful lot of faff for <laughs> for what might only be a few veg boxes a year. I've just harvested some some globe artichokes and uh, it's probably a bit late because they're a little bit open uh, although they're not actually in flower yet but I, I seriously suspect these are past their, their best um, but yeah I didn't get around to, um, to, <laughs> to harvesting them sooner so I'm going to take these to the kitchen and uh, and see what they're like. Well, surprise number one was that the <laughs> was that the artichokes were um, were full of earwigs. So, uh, lesson learned for future harvesting of of artichokes is <laughs> is to make sure that uh, when I've cut them, I give them a really good shake to uh, to remove the uh, 
the most of the earwigs and to uh, plunge them into salty water to uh, and swish them around to remove the rest of them. Now I kind of suspect that the earwigs are there because um, the plants have got so heavy with the weight of the, the uh, huge artichokes on the top of the stems that they had fallen over. Uh, so they were most of them were lying on the ground or just off the ground, but they were they were lying horizontally. Um, and and also, so if you harvest them when they're still tight hearts, um, there's less access for an earwig to to get into the uh, to get in in between the. Uh, well, now what are they? I think they're probably sepals, but um, in between the uh, scaly bits. So, uh, so I've I've washed them <laughs> in salty water several times now. Um, and that does seem to have uh, removed all the earwigs, I hope. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut them in half and um, and have a look at what the the hearts look like. Now I'm I'm really not a fan of earwigs, so if another one <laughs> appears, you may hear me squeal um, in a rather undignified manner. So I'm actually just going to cut right through the middle of it and have a look. Now, this is the bit that one would want to eat if, <laughs> if it hadn't already uh, <laughs> or maybe actually it's the little piece underneath that here that looks like it uh, but certainly I'm not going to be eating this because look it's already got its flower. I don't know if you can see that clearly enough. It's already got its flower uh, bits going on there. So that is really not much fun uh, to eat. So now I know uh, these won't be any good for eating and I've left them too late for this year. Uh, but you know, next year maybe if I get my act together. <laughs> Well, that's it for me today. I am off to plant pumpkins and uh, carry on with paperwork. And, uh, and I hope wherever you are in the world that your day is filled with less paperwork and, and more joyful things. And I also hope that you can join me again tomorrow. Mm -hmm.